right, already right. done. Next episode. <laughs> Alright, what, what were you asking for? A perception check? Mm-hmm. Jesus Christ. Good. <laughs> Christoph knows. What, bitch? Oh, shit. So is this for uh, you or for Albert? Oh, it's for me. It, you can roll for both. All right, cool. So yeah, it's just a different angle. Um, so, uh, you know, you could say that Owler got to see the brunt of what happened with the ship. Um, you know, this this sort of hammerhead ship, we're just going to call it that, um, just smashed right through with no regard for even itself, it seems like. But it seems built to uh, attack uh, in this way and sort of it wedges itself into the into the side of the ship there and again it's on the same side where the cannons were firing um so um where you are now all of you that are sort of below decks um is encroached by the front of this sort of the beak of this ship um what Owler sees and what we could say Ralph sees and Kristoff as well, uh, right before the ship sort of exploded into your current uh, uh, realm, um, is that there were – this wasn't a clean-looking ship in any way. There were things done to this ship to specifically, seemingly meant to intimidate anyone that looked on it and – not in any way like, oh, I'm a big burly guy, I'm going to beat you up. No, there are corpses tied to this ship. There are pikes sticking out of the ship in irregular angles that have heads, sometimes just torsos, sands, head, leg, appendages, anything, um, and just a general air of disgustingness. Uh, the smell, aside from the the smell of wood that has just been smashed apart of uh, the sort of like uh, aromatic scent of wood uh, when it breaks um, is replaced immediately with a foul just sort of disgusting rotten scent if uh, you were eminent. five years old would you equate it to being yucky uh, it would be yes yucky in a way that uh, that would make you run screaming because normally yucky boys sometimes get into it, right? Uh, they'll pick up a worm. But this is more than that. This is like picking up your best friend's intestines um, in the middle of a schoolyard, right? So, um, yeah, it's this ship rivers. is – Yeah, they're basically weavers for the most part, if you're familiar with that term in the Firefly or Serenity, depending on what you saw the show or the movie. Um, so – uh, so that's basically what happens. The entire ship is thrown into chaos. Everything is chaos. And what uh, you notice now, uh, John, you definitely hear that. And this is sort of moments after you've even stepped into the room. Uh, you just hear this giant explosion behind you um, and a sort of just, you know, you didn't hear so much the voices right before that happens, but you felt it. This entire ship sort of heaved with the motion of uh of something else smashing directly into the ship uh, at a very high rate of speed um if you're still doing equations you can plug some of these variables into your force equals mass times acceleration all that stuff um something definitely happened to the ship right now and it was definitely not just a cannonball um you get the feeling um that uh that you might not have a lot of time um, to uh, to get what you want, uh, you know, finished. Uh, so you might want to get to it, so to speak. Harry the um, fuck up. Yeah, and so just to describe a little bit more, as you, as the rest of you guys at least, um, you hear a sort of like a yelping sound, like sort of like a, a yipping kind of. Again, I've used that word before, but this is more animalistic. Um, you hear sort of like hooting and um, and almost like a bark, and what seems to roll off like like waves on this ship, almost as if the momentum of the crash drove the movement of the beings on this ship uh, onto the deck, sort of spilling out onto it, uh, it just with shrieking howls. 
um, and just this sort of like this bloodthirsty sound, this blood curdling sound um, of just you know sort of battle that has been taken up again. Um, you guys that are below deck uh, don't necessarily see it, um, but Owler is uh, is seeing something that he wishes he didn't. Um, it's uh, it's just a, an array of sort of these strange humanoid uh, beings um, that, uh, and you can you can see what Owler sees, Raphael. I keep forgetting yes. about this uh, the other thing. So I'd like you to roll the nature one. All right. So um, you have seen something like this. Uh, uh, in your studies uh, before, um, and in fact, even in your in your in out in the wild as you fought uh, many battles, every once in a while, your um, your uh, your battalion, your your you know your squad, every once in a while would have to go out and gather supplies um, and bring them back to forward operating base, um, and every once in a while you had to deal with raids. Uh, by animals or creatures just like this, but these are very different. Um, these are what they remind you of gnolls uh, for the most part, but they seem very different. At the same time, more sophisticated and less sophisticated. Where gnolls are very savage um, already, they're usually very tribal. They've got very sort of crappy uh, clothing for the most part. Um, these are sort of, they're less tribal looking, but just as savage. Uh, and in fact, uh, what you notice is that some of, in fact, a majority of the gnolls that are coming, just pouring off of the ship um, are very gaunt. They sort of, like if you've ever seen a dog in the rain that hasn't eaten for like a week. Um, oh, that's so the sad. Skin, yeah, the skin is sort of very tight against their um, against their body, like the dog um, in so Futurama. Bones, sort of. Yeah, I mean, don't remind me of that. If did you want me to cry, asshole? <laughs> um, so yeah, you can see that that's um, uh, that's sort of what a lot of the the. If you want to call this a crew, you can, uh, but it's definitely not what you know Webster's Dictionary would say. Um, that the, some of these guys have seem to have already been eaten parts of their skin are just gone uh, and you're not sure whether they're just uh clinging to life and just suffering through some, some sort of disease or whether there's some sort of like they should just be skeleton uh, but that's what you guys see now john doesn't know any of that but he does hear the sounds happening behind and the captain behind you uh in the other door um seems to have become more agitated, uh, uh, you know, which is a great shift. In, a, in just a few moments, a lot of things have happened, um, and so you're you're not too worried that maybe the, cap, the captain might uh, uh, be walking in on you. He seems to be preoccupied with something back there. And so uh, what do you do? John? Mm-hmm. John? John fell asleep. I mean, I saw him, like, click. Yeah. That's right. John doesn't do anything. John! Because John is dead. He just entered an abyss. That room Did... wasn't a room. Is Kristoff alive, too? Define alive. There we go. Are any of us alive? <laughs> I mean, okay, so, so essentially... We can go back, yeah. We, we have to get this item and get the fuck out, right? But now we took too long, and now there's a whole bunch of bad dudes, and now we're getting rammed from outside, getting rammed from inside, and getting fucked amongst each other. So I we should just fucking book it and look for this shit. Clear room by room if we have to. Yeah. I mean, the whole the whole basement is open, right? The, I mean, where we are, the uh, the room where we are is just an open space, isn't it? It for the so. most part, and when, it's funny that you use the term "open space." Um, oh no! Because as it so happens, there are there's part of uh, the sort of the the area that you're in that is exposed directly to 
open space, a lot of this ship has taken the kind of damage that you're not sure they'll ever be able to repair. Um, you are, um, you do see that. Uh, you do see that there is some, uh, you know, just enough that maybe you can sort of work your way around the, uh, the sort of uh, the bow of this new interloper ship um, so that you can make it to the stairs, but it does sort of stand as an obstacle uh, between you and the uh, and the stairs. Now, obstacle is a great word as well um, because you also have other obstacles in the form of gnolls that are pouring out of this ship and even the holes in the side of its hull uh, directly onto this ship. Um, and I'm not going to ask for an initiative roll because you guys already gave me one. Um, I'm but... just going to take it. <laughs> so what I would like you to know is that you have a decent amount of gnolls that are in your space. And it is you're technically in initiative, but you have not been discovered yet. Um, so what so, you're saying is this is a surprise round. Yes. And so, well, not necessarily. Um, so the, uh, let's see, I'm actually going through the initiative, like who actually has, and it would be John, but it looks like, uh, like John just got teleported to another place in the zone. Um, it is actually Maven's turn. Okay, great. Just, yeah, yeah, just tell me what you're doing. You're not, you can attack if you want, uh, but you haven't exactly been noticed. All right, so, uh, yeah, I'll probably attack. I just want to see something. Mm -hmm. What's before you is sort of like this, you know, it's a mixture. You do see some of these gaunt-looking gnolls. You also see some more fleshy gnolls that, that definitely look like they are hungry for something. It's a lot of just like saliva and disgusting sounds coming from these things just um just they are uncouth individuals that would never be invited to dinner in probably any of your homes great so um how many of them are directly in front of me um so what you have sort of coming towards you and again there is it's just sort of wave after wave probably who knows how many of these uh, things were sort of packed in like sardines into this ship. Um, but what you can see for sure is that there are at least five um, of a mixture of gnolls here. Three of them are the really sort of skinny, gaunt-looking ones, um, and two of them are more normal-looking gnolls. Again, I want to point out that at least three of them have eye patch. Okay, are they all within 30 feet of me? Um, yes, definitely within 30 feet of them. All of them? Yes. You could say they're even, they're probably about 20 feet um, from you in this moment. Um, and they do seem to be uh, fanning out uh, in some sort of, you know, food search pattern. Okay, so I'm going to need wisdom saving throws from all of them. Oh, you tell. What is the DC for this way? Say, uh, 16. All right, let's take a look. I'm going to be rolling in physical space, and we'll see. All right. Oh, shit, I actually got, oh, one. hold on, let me write these down. Oh, my God. How, how come every time it's important, I'm rolling these fucking garbage rolls? All right, so two more for me. All right, again, garbage. All right, so uh, what was the DC again? 16. Um, yet each and every one of these guys fails. One of them even rolled a one. So okay, so you can do what you wish. <laughs> all right, so I cast fear. So each of them, if they're holding a weapon, which I imagine they are, they drop whatever they're holding promptly. Okay, so whatever yeah. they're holding drops to the floor, um, and then they use their action to move to dash as far. Oh well. Uh, well Drop whatever. When frightened by the spell, the creature must take the dash action to move away from you the safest available route on each of its turns. So on its turn, on each of their turns, their the, their action is going to be to take the dash action. Okay. So Damn. Perfect. So um, what you, and give me one more second here. 
start again. So, um, what you see before you is a bunch of gibbering, just animalistic humanoids, right? And so, uh, at once, they were very, uh, they approached with the confidence of predators on, uh, on a pack hunt. Um, immediately, that turns, and their faces, you can tell, and their disgustingly deformed faces with the toothed, uh, you know, grins, so to speak, immediately turn into worried, sort of, um, fearful uh, looks. They, they start searching around. They don't exactly even understand why they fear the way they do in this moment. And this is not normally how they feel. Um, but they immediately turn tail, pretty much literally, um, and run away. And in that moment, you actually notice there were two that you hadn't seen before as they were coming out that also were affected well, by this smell. Well, they don't, run, they don't run away yet. They run away on their turns. They dash yeah, on their so, turn. Well, they definitely turn tail, and mm -hmm. you know that you have affected them uh, with that uh, spell. So, you know, narratively, they'll obviously run away on their turn. Okay. Um, it is Raphael's turn. How close are they all to each other? Um, they were fairly close. They were pretty bunched up. Um, if you want to get mathematical, you could say they were all together... Um, you know, they were sort of taking, they were coming out of a very small hole in your area. Um, so they were bunched up immediately. And they're small um, and creatures, they right? Spread out. No, no, these are, these are normal, medium sized, uh, humanoids. Yeah. Ah, uh, so like, let's just say, would they fit in a 10 foot radius sphere? I would say that, yes, as they spread out. They started spreading out in a sort of 10 foot, um, you could even say a cube. Uh, they were packed pretty tightly as they as they sort of came scrambling out. Um, and so I guess after the spell was cast, um, you could say, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll give that a 10 foot. So, uh, so okay then, yeah. if that's the case, I need a constitution saving throw, please. Jesus Christ, you guys are gonna keep making me roll. <laughs> so constitution, right? Yeah. All right, so let's see what we got. I actually have a bonus to that one. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, so you, well, no, you also have disadvantage on ability checks and attack rolls while the source of your fear is within your line of sight. Oh, snap. Oh, but they just say that for, uh, for, uh, uh, for saves. Well, you have to make one right now. No, no, but that's what I mean. Like, is, is it disadvantage on saves as well? Or is oh, I assumed an ability check was a save. No, okay. they're not the same. Okay. Sure. Are they no, not? Yeah. If it's a con saving throw, I'll say that's an ability. So, of course. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, because why not, right? They're they're already fearful. Um, so, let's see. Oh, what? I rolled the same number three times in a row. You're not gonna like it, Ralph. Oh no, I'm not Maybe. as good as 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 him. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's not as bad as having advantage on uh, pretty much three rolls in a row and not hitting on either, on any of them. Yeah. Um, and so, I mean, 12, oh, geez. Well, and I rolled the same on both of those, and those are garbage. And so what was the DC again? So it has to be a 13. All right, so um, four of them, because now you know you're dealing with uh, it's seven total. Uh, four of them uh, failed it. Three of them did not. So That's okay. Happens? Okay, so they're all about to take some damage. Okay. So I ended up casting the spell Shatter. Oh, yeah? Yeah, so, I mean, okay. let's just take these 3d8 thunder damage. That's pretty cool. All right, 3d8. And the ones that passed take half, essentially. Ah, okay. Cool, so let me uh, find out. Nah, nah. So they all take ten, except for the the ones that pass. They take five. Okay. Also, uh, non magical objects that isn't being worn or carried also takes damage. So if they have any non magical items, say uh, sayonara to some of those. All right. Oh my so, god, they're going to be completely, they're going to have no equipment left. They're fucking so, useless now. You, <laughs> so you have, uh, you, I guess you, you put your hands out uh, and sort of 
make a maneuver that sort of implies, you know, things are about to break here. Yeah. You're, you're going to break a few things. Um, and uh, not only does their does their equipment start to shatter before you, but so do their bodies. Um, and <laughs> immediately within the first, you know, attack, obviously here, um, four of them crumple. It's as if you have, um, it's as if you have taken their bones, like, a, you know, a tiny kindling wood um, and just smashed it in your grip. And all of their stuff is just crushed. It, all of their stuff is just gone and almost a dust um and their bodies as well four of them immediately just bite they are gone um never to be seen again that's um, good that's what i like the others yep yeah, the others are in pretty bad shape the other three um that are still there that are eventually going to run away and now they have a real reason um <laughs> they uh they are in pretty bad shape um not doing so well all right, and is that your turn? This isn't even my final form yet. <laughs> He's final forming. Um, okay. But yeah, that's going to end my turn. Awesome. So it is now Kristoff's turn. So what's left there? Of, like, there are in, in front of Bones, you are bodies. Three, Excellent. yeah, there are bodies for sure. There is open space. There is three, there are three gnolls, two of which are, um, are sort of the, the, typical sort of fleshy gnolls. The other one is a little bit of a withered one. Um, and they're uh, they're not in good shape. And they also look like they're afraid. Like they might not want much to do with you right is now. Is the captain here as well? No, the captain, you wouldn't know this, but uh, actually, yeah, you do. Because as you look to one of the gaping holes in the side of this ship, you see a sort of... Uh, you see him, not the captain. You're you asking the commander guy that was doing the uh, cannibal? Yeah. 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 He's, you see him floating. He's pretty far away, but you do see him floating off into the ether uh, mm. outside okay. the ship. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay, fair enough. Um... Yeah. yeah, right now there's only that ship in your pla in your space, and these uh, gnolls are coming out. Yeah, these guys have it. I'm going to go uh, go above deck. See what's what's okay. over there. Though. You're just gonna okay. leave us? You guys seem to have it. Yeah, it seems to be. In <laughs> I only have like one more of those spells. <laughs> so I mean, what? Uh, there are what, like two, three left alive? Yeah, there are three right now. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you guys got it. Oh, you killed all those other ones in that one shot. He, yeah, in that one shot. He killed four right there on the spot. Yeah, he uh, took, he took everything away it. from them that they held dear. Yeah, you don't need me. See ya. One of them had a little porcelain doll. That's uh, gone. Uh, human, and that's gone. That's that's not even. That's just dust. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust, man. Yeah. Carry on my way. <laughs> so yeah, I, I go uh, above deck. All right. So um, it takes you a little bit from where you were. It's still, uh, you might um, need to make uh, a. Let me double check because this would. I mean an acrobatics check. Uh, give me an athletics check. Because you have to make your way and sort of squeeze by um, a uh, sort of this, you know, the the front of this ship, the beak, so to speak, that's crashed through. Um, uh, and it's sort of in the way. And you have to sort of sneak by. There's just enough space that you can sort of squeeze through. Oh, so it's basically I'm, I'm on the other side of right. where it crashed into it. Yeah, it's in between you and the ladders. It's not impossible. It's not even a big, uh, it's not a difficult PC. I just want to make sure. It's, no pedophile. Yeah, no. Goodbye, guys. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll see you later. <laughs> All right. So, um, as you sort of squeeze through, um, stuck between uh, the front of a ship and the inside of a ship, um, you sort of get. Oh, you, you felt like you're you're making it I through there, away. and you're actually, you know what? Tell you what, I just remembered, you are small, aren't you? Actually, yeah, I am. Yeah, so the next 10 um, minutes. it's difficult. It's actually sort of difficult, but it's not that bad. You actually, that roll is bad, but um, you don't uh, seem to have any problem once you get through it. Um, but what you notice is you're, you had, let's say, a strap, maybe, that you're sort of, that's holding some of your gear. 
um, and that sort of gets hung up on a piece of wood. Um, so what I'll say is that you do make it past, um, but you now have to uh, spend like half of your movement to sort of undo this thing, right? And just get out. Um, and so you do make it, um, but you don't quite make it up above deck yet. So you're at the base of the stairs pretty much because it was, it was pretty far away, but I'll just say, you know, you made it there. And Sounds now, good. and so that's it. You're, like, you're not going to, no spells or nothing, right? Nah. These guys okay. got it. All right. So um, let's see. So this, give me a second. Nope, that's not. So as far as you know, nothing happens. Um, Again, as far as you know, nothing happens. So, um, now uh, what happens is the three gnolls that were in front of you um, uh, turn tail and literally try to sort of scramble their way out of this, right? And so the only the only uh, place they see for real escape here, um, just check this number here. Oh boy, all right, good. Um, is there were there were two options they had. They had the unbearable emptiness of space and then they had uh, this little, sort of little squeeze spot and so what they do is they all attempt to sort of bunch up at the squeeze spot and we got one guy uh, sort of tries to make it I can't believe it rolled again the same roll all right good so one guy in the front um, one of the more uh, you know one of the real nose let's say um, sort of just can't make it through and um, and then the one that sort of also is, is in a frenzy, in a panic, um, just sort of like is jamming the second one now, is pushing that first one, trying to get them through. Uh, and they're both sort of stuck. They're not having a good time uh, getting through this. Uh, but the third one, um, another sort of fleshy note, sort of uh, just barrels into all of them and pops the other two through there through sheer force of... Uh, just physics um, and <laughs> they the two of them make it through um, and he is actually the last one is now prone and still trying to scramble through the hole um, but is sort of like crawling in this case not trying to squeeze while on their feet um, but the other two definitely make it they get up um, Christoph you do have some friends um, and but they scream running past you they actually make it up above deck um, out there. Um, and so you sort of catch a whiff of these things. It's disgusting. It, this isn't really cool. There's another guy behind you um, that's sort of trying to uh, crawl his way through, <clears throat> but he hasn't made it through yet. Um, it is now John's turn. Is he back? Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah, it's not. Yeah. So it's cool. We'll we'll leave the mystery for what happens with John later. Um, so give me one second because again there are things happening above <clears throat> that you're all unaware of. Oh, that's a wonderful, wonderful that guy. Um, it is now Maven's turn. Nope. Um, yep, it's Maven's turn. Okay. Um. So um, if I were to so how far away are the stairs? These stairs are behind a the front of the ship. I'm gonna say it was 60 feet before, but I've given you a little bit more, um, a little closer uh, space. Um, but yeah, you'd have to make it. You assume something about 40 feet at least um, to get to the uh, other side of that. Okay, so there's at least plus okay. an athletic check to sort of squeeze through, unless you know a way to get beyond the uh, the ship. Well, okay, so I will, um, I will head over there because I, I mean, there's no point in staying down here now. Um, yeah, this is not a cool scene anymore. Yeah, so I will head over to the, um, the opening. Well, I can only move 30 feet, so I move 30 feet. Okay. And is there, uh, the, um, there's that one gnome that's still within my range? There is a knoll at your feet. If you do make it to the uh, to the little crevasse there, um, there is a knoll at your feet. Okay. He's in the way, just so you know. Uh, but yeah, he's at your feet, trying to trying to run away uh, through. He sort of got uh, stuck. All right. One second. I just want to check the spell. 
Chill out so, the quad. So is chill touch a save for me or an attack? It's an attack. Alrighty. The AC is not high. Roll high. 1d20 plus. Right. Oh yeah, that definitely hits. You are definitely touching the shit out of this guy. Okay. Chill touch. Chill out. Okay, eight points of damage. I like that. Um, and so as you go to grasp, let's say the leg, um, because that's the closest thing to you. Um, as you touch its leg, you know, just, uh, you know, it's it's not a pretty sight because chill touch is sort of like necro uh, necrotic damage, right? Correct. Yeah, it's so, basically like a skeletal hand reaches out and touches yeah. the. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, is it is it range touch? I never noticed. It, well, it's a, no, no. It's a ranged spell attack, but the the descriptor of it is a ghostly skeletal hand sure. appears yeah. in the space of the creature and touches it. All right. So I mean, you you not only made them fear a thing, you made them know what they were fearing uh, when you walk up to this one. And it's trying to already run for its own life uh, through th with no sense, for no reason. Um, uh, and it gets touched by this sort of skeletal hand that appears um, and grasps its leg, so to speak. Um, and it, it is dead. It, like all the necrotic energy uh, that it takes at this point is too much for it. It already took a, a massive blow to all of its uh, equipment. Um, uh, and it's sort of it's structure, it's bone structure, um, and you finished it off. It is dead. Oh, cool. Yeah, if you wish We're to just some stone-cold killers, man. Yeah, you guys are murderous. Uh, so, um, if you wish to continue through, um, you do sort of have that, uh, that body. It's shrunken a little bit, um, sort of sucked the life out of it, so to speak. Um, but you do have to make a check to get through, uh, still squeeze your way through, unless you want to... Well, I don't have I don't have the action to do that this turn. Plus, I'm not close enough, am I? Well, you are. You would be, like, because you can continue your movement. Uh, but so 30 feet. Uh, it, it's let's say it was about 20 feet to get to the uh, to get to that point. Um, so if you walked right up to the uh, little squeeze spot, um, and then you would still have extra movement if you wanted to try. Well, well sure. If you're gonna allow me to make the check this round, sure. Sure. Yeah. I mean, honestly, there was not much impediment. You just literally cast a spell and killed the thing instantly. So I would allow you definitely to at least move through it, and we'll make the check through. See how see how well. You see, is this strength roll you said? This is uh, an athletics check. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, that's still just strength for me, I think. Yep. <sighs> that's John, right? Hey, John. <laughs> You missed stuff. Yeah. You sure okay. did. Yeah, yeah, that's great. <laughs> so the seven, uh, that uh, that basically, you know, it's, it's you're sort of going to be stuck there for a little bit. Um, yeah, you're not fine. actually stuck, but you don't quite make it through. It's going to take a little bit more effort to try to pop through, but you are impeding anyone else that might be uh, trying to uh, get through. Um, and <laughs> who do we have next? It is uh, Raphael's turn. So, is anything actually alive? Right now, the only living things that you can tell, aside from anything that may still be in the ship, um, uh, is you and Maven. And obviously, Kristoff on the other side of there, but you don't know where he is. And John? Uh, and, well, you don't know, yeah, but John is somewhere else. So, are we out of initiative? You Technically, you're still in initiative. This is more for me. Um, because there are things that are also sort of happening um, outside of your vision. Okay, so, uh, I mean, I don't immediately see any danger. Uh, I'm just going to... Are the bodies still there, at least? Like, can I loot yeah, the them? Bodies, 
Yeah, the bodies are there. Um, so is there, I don't think anything is left to loot, is there? Um, there really isn't. A lot of stuff is smashed. Um, you're not seeing anything that really stands out. And give me, gotta make this fair. Um, all right, yeah, so you're really not finding much. Um, well, he cast shatter on gnomes. Right, well, yeah, most of So it means that magical things would still be there. Oh, right. no, he's, oh, just, okay. he's just checking, yeah. So, um, you know, for the most part, everything is just uh, crumbled up. Um, so, you know, any, they had like a lot of, you know, teeth on, uh, you know, on like necklace on thongs, teeth on thongs. Um, and <laughs> so, you know, it's just, it's really messed up. Their, their face is all scarred. You know, once you start taking a closer look, um, the other ones that were sort of like really withered and uh, whatever, you can tell they really shouldn't have been alive. You don't even they see shouldn't. much. Yeah, you shouldn't see, you don't even see uh, like blood. Which, like, you see meat, but you don't see the things that would sort of imply that they were actually living creatures. The other ones were, um, and they're dead anyway. Um, and you find, honestly, you do find a little bit of a trinket. It's broken uh, for the most part. For but obvious it looks reasons. Like it was a necklace that was a sort of like a, like a medallion, but nothing too fancy. Um, but you think it's, you know, something you could just pick up and maybe, you know, gather it up. It does look like it's made of some sort of... But nothing, you know, nothing too crazy. It's, a, it's sort of a trinket that seemed to one of them had around the neck. Um, and by your assessment, probably maybe a couple of gold if you can sort of uh, piece it back together and just sell it for a scrap. All right. So if that's the case, I guess we should be making our way out. Uh, we need to go find this item, which Ralph, yeah. real life Ralph, has totally forgot what it was by now. Yeah, yeah, who knows? Um, so the... You do. You are sort of uh, obstructed by Maven's body, who is trying to squeeze through. Um, unless you know, want to go through the ship, I don't know how. You know, smart. I that thought you were about to knows. say go through Maven. That's what I thought he was going to say too. <laughs> if you want to enter through Maven's rear orifice and come out through the front orifice, I don't know if you have a spell that does that. Um, come at me, yeah. bro. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my. You, I mean, as a, just as DM trying to help, maybe you may want to help Maven. Um, okay, sort of, I will uh, provide the assist command. Oh, the assist command. Oh, what look wonderful. The assist action uh, is being applied. So you sort of push, uh, you use your turn, and, and you walk up to Maven. And you sort of like try to squeeze through. Um, you don't have butter on you, uh, but for the most part, um, you are helping. And it is Kristoff's turn. It is teamwork. Yeah. So, do I see anything on this uh, yeah. side? So, besides the guys that ran away, on this yeah, on this side, um, the guys that uh, did run away um, are basically past you at this point. So, you, I'm assuming you make it the rest of the way up the stair, yep. um, and you are treated to a new scene uh, that you hadn't seen before. You haven't seen the top of the deck yet, anyway, but. Uh, what you see compared to what it was there before is just completely different. The top of that ship has basically smashed right through. Um, so you could actually walk on top if you sort of jumped onto the deck of the other ship, uh, which is, I mean, that looks like it took damage before it ever hit this ship. Um, so it was all in rough shape anyway. Um, and you see, you just see knolls everywhere. You see them engaged in hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat, sword-to-hand combat, tooth-to-sword combat. It fuck? is, Yeah, it is just, it is wild, um, and you're not sure you want to be any part of it. I'm not sure. I don't want to take that decision out of your hand. But, uh, yeah, there's there's just battle. You, you pretty much know the score at this point. There are, you see, uh, again, you saw that weird-looking, uh, like, thing with the patch with had the two stalks in its eyes. Um, yep. That seems to be uh, engaged in battle with at least two nulls. Um, there are corpses everywhere. Some are groaning, uh, and probably not for long. Um, innards uh, flow freely from uh, from guts, um, and that's what you see. You still have a little bit of movement uh, if you want. Uh, where would you like to go? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and. Um... So we're looking for that green sack. 
<laughs> yeah, you are. Well, I'm just gonna let them all kill each other. I'm not a yeah. part of this. Yeah, yeah why need, no need to needlessly get involved. Yeah, like this is not your not fight. My problem. Yeah. This is somebody else's problem. <laughs> so, um, alright, so what, you're just gonna move and, uh, and that's it, right? Like, what, what direction are you gonna go if you're going at all? I'm gonna go to whatever important, wherever it seems like it might be an important area of the ship. Okay, so um, as you look around, uh, you know, towards the uh, aft of the ship, um, you do see uh, a sort of uh, larger uh, Githyanki. It seems important. Um, this, uh, you assume that this is probably the captain uh, engaged in battle. Um, and uh, in that direction, you'd have to sort of, you know, work your way around this battle. Um, but uh, that may not be a problem for you. Uh, but yeah, that you just have to sort of make your way through uh, a fight. The the captain seems to be engaged with many uh, gnolls, uh, both living and possibly not living. Um, and what uh, what you're gonna do, I guess, is you'll make your way towards the uh, back. Yep. Thing there. Um, I'll upload cool. just a picture for flavor of what could be. Uh, captain, uh, uh, get the Yankee captain. Um, and so, uh, it is now, it's actually the captain's turn. So, we might as well describe what they're doing. So, um, tricking off. This is, yeah, so he just pulls out his fucking hog and just goes to town on it. Um, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, you can't, you can't drop the I'll, I'll always go for it. Um, anyway, so, <laughs> so, um, so this one, what you do also see is um, off of the ship, um, basically just sort of leaping onto the deck that you're currently on, uh, Christoph. So this ship, um, you see another null. This one seems to be a much uh, larger null uh, than the others, um, just brandishing uh, just swords that are just ragged. These do not look like they have been... That no elf ever set foot near this sword's craft, uh, you know. So uh, these just basically looks like they ripped pieces of steel off of something, uh, and then wrapped it around with sort of rags and maybe some sort of tape, uh, and that became uh, the sword that this uh, this gnoll is uh, rolling with. Um, and so he jumps off, and in almost in the same uh, maneuver. Um, he takes a swing at like the nearest uh, Yankee um, crew members uh, that are there, and uh, they try to defend themselves, and they don't do uh, very well. Um, and he lops one of their heads off uh, yes! immediately. Um, and so the other one, he also takes another stab um, at that one. It's more of a slash. Let's uh, let's get real. Um, and he actually yep. Uh, so. Um, and that one, he sort of slashes right across the gut and sort of immediately disembowels that one. Um, and so, of course, there are more to be had. There's a smorgasbord of, uh, of Githyanki for this uh, no, uh captain. And so the next turn is actually the, uh, the Githyanki uh, captain. And so as he uh, finishes up on the nose that were in front of him, he sort of zeroes in on that captain. Um, across, which you assume is the Knoll Captain, if you can even call this ship uh, something that has a captain, um, and zeroes in on him and says, um, you know, I can smell your foul stench from here, filthy Knolls, how dare you attack my ship, and makes a beeline um, right to the Knoll. Um, he does not, oh, he absolutely does not notice you um, sort of standing about uh, where the stairs area is, but he does pass you within about 10 feet. He is very focused on the null captain. Um, and so we're just going to hand wave. It's actually some of the other uh, gnolls that go. Um, so a lot of, you know, a lot of them continue to battle. Uh, I'm going to roll real quick. Nope, that guy. So um, what uh, the guys down below notice is that another group of gnolls, you hear that gibbering sound coming out, 
um, of the of the hole where they were flowing out before, and you get another three gnolls coming out. Um, and one of these is a fleshy one. Two of them are uh, sort of like the, the withered ones. Um, and they are basically, you can smell their breath as they come out of this hole. Um, and they're going to attack uh, Raphael because he is in the back pushing uh, Maven. Do it. Yeah, let's let's do it. Does a thirteen hit? No. Oh, that's nice. So the other one comes out. Oh shit! This one definitely hits. Uh, I'm not gonna say why, but you can assume by the rules as to why it hits. I'm assuming that's a critical. It is. <laughs> so give me one second here. Oh, all right. So at least you lucked out on that to a certain degree. So you take six points of damage from that one, and there is one more. Uh, it attacks you. Oh, it's okay. Okay. It's Sixteen hundred points of damage. Yeah. All right. So that if the other one didn't hit, so he rolled a an eleven, which I'm assuming doesn't hit you. Nope. Um, and so yeah, so you did get hit uh, by that one, and so they all sort of bunch up and they're starting to like poke you. Uh, with their uh, their swords, if you can call swords. Um, Wait, I thought you said they crit. One did crit and hit you for six. That's a crit. Well, yeah, because you rolled the dice twice, right? Yeah, there's you no modifiers. Do very well. Yeah, there's modifiers. Are you, are you but it wasn't, wasn't very good. Are they yeah, attacking me with their fists? No, so they have uh, you know. Well, so on top of that, I'm not using the stat blocks of a an exact. Uh, you know, no, you know, that's there because some of those guys were a little tougher. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it's. They, I, I think they, you didn't roll high, man. You know, I'm, I'm, you I'm want, just making I sure. Roll. I want to be fair, you know. Yeah. Oh, this, this like you're there's definitely. Be a fair lot. to yourself, Ralph. Be yeah. fair to yourself, <laughs> right now. <laughs> so, um, and so that's the the no uh, sort of crew's turn. Uh, again, it's John's turn, but it sounds like he just woke up again. Um, so what you, Christoph, see, this is one of the, again, these, uh, this weird-looking thing that's just sort of floating with the little uh, tendrils and stuff. Um, that guy, uh, or thing, who knows what that is, uh, you know, takes a slash, is definitely engaged in at least one, uh, one, uh, no, actually seems to be on the, the Yankee side of things. Um, and uh, and definitely just starts going to town on this um, with uh, with two attacks um, and just straight up murders one of the gnolls um, and it sort of moves on to another uh, another group of gnolls at this point. It is now Maven's turn. Okay, so when Ralph assisted me, did he actually push me through? You were pushed through, yes. Okay. At, at great risk to his buttocks. <laughs> Beauty. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so from where I am on the stairs, can I see this null captain? Um, from there, so if you're gonna make it through the rest of the way, definitely. If you want to just get to the top of the stairs, you do see the null captain and the uh, get the Yankee captain uh, currently engaged in what seems to be great combat if you're into that sort of thing. So I have a question. Are they close to the edge of the ship? Um, you could say, they are close to the edge of what used to be part of the edge of this ship, um, but they are also as close to the beginning of the other ship. Right? So, um, so if you can say that the ship is uh, just as an easy way to perpendicular to the ship that you're on now, um, you could say they're in the crook of where that is. So they, they're, are I, I'm going to say they're about... Mm -hmm. Are either of them in danger of being pushed overboard? Um, yeah, I'll say that they're at least five feet away from what could be considered space um, in the same way that the others, you know, were boarding and, and fell off. Um, so, yeah, they could be, yeah, they're about five feet away um, and one in front of the other. So the other one would be, let's say, mechanically ten feet away. Uh, but you could say the knoll is the one closest to the edge. Okay, so I am going to, um, and is there anything in between me and the knoll? Um, I'm going to say Kristoff is not in your way, 
Um, he's probably off to the side, just enjoying the sights. Um, yep. and Are there any other enemies, or, or do I just have a straight line of shot? Are there enemies obscuring me? Anything? You can, you can say th there's nothing directly in the way. There's battle going back and forth in front of you. You can see it, you know, you can wait for your opportunity, so to speak, uh, and definitely find a direct uh, path. Uh, well, no, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm totally fine if there are enemies. I mm -hmm. just want to know it. I just want to know how many I have lined up. Okay, so give me one second here. I'm actually going to roll to see. Because there is definitely, it's uh, it's filled with people that are battling. Oh, yeah. Cool. So you can say there are uh, two of each uh, currently engaged, right? So one no, one get the Yankee, sort of slightly off to the left of you, um, if you're looking directly at the captains. Uh, and then another no and uh, lizard man, I should say, um, in uh, engaged in combat themselves, slightly off to the right. Um, but there, you could say they're within uh, ten feet of each other, right? Okay. So, like, yeah. So no, it's just them. it's just a straight line. So yeah. So sure. I'm gonna point directly at the um, I'm gonna point directly at the null captain. Mm -hmm. and cast Gust of Wind to try and push him off the ship. Oh, that sounds like a wonderful idea. Um, so so yeah. I need a strength saving throw, which Ooh. he's probably good at, but I'm going to try maybe, my best. Maybe not. We, we're not entirely sure. Um, so, second. Let's us do the strength saving throw for the <laughs> old captain. It is a 12. Okay, so he's pushed back 15 feet. Oh, wonderful. So, All right. So, like so you said he was 5 feet away from the edge? Yes, he was. But And so this also catches the uh, the other captain as well, right? Oh, no. No, just a, it's just a straight line, so it's not like a radius. So mm -hmm. unless the captain, unless the Githyanki captain was standing directly in line, like well, in the way... The Gith Yankee rolled a 17. I mean, sure. Like, I wasn't aiming for him, but, like, he didn't... He shouldn't need to roll if he wasn't in the way. It's not like... It's not like a lightning bolt where it's, like, a five-foot radius. It's literally a straight line. Okay, so, so more like a laser to... in a way. Ex right? Exactly. Okay, so, yeah. So, he would have been slightly off to the side. They were engaged. Um, mm -hmm. But, so, yeah. So, um, as you cast this gust of wind... Uh, how so how does this wind sort of pick up how is this how does this spell happen so basically in a straight line from my location to the like going in a straight line in any direction i choose uh it's just a a burst of super concentrated wind that that pushes whoever it, whoever it hits okay so mm -hmm. as you cast a sort of focused uh, blast of gust of wind um, strikes the null captain in the middle of uh, of one of his attacks um, as he goes to swing at the captain and catches him sort of off guard and uh, and sort of with a surprised look on his face um, he gets sort of his chest just gets blown you know backwards caved in so to speak um, does he take any damage by the way it's it's no damage he just fails if he fails, he gets pushed back 15 feet, and I can maintain it with concentration. Yeah, so... Uh, but, and he, yeah. So, what yeah, happened? So he gets... Uh, so as he gets blown, he clearly gets blown off uh, the current deck of the ship. Yeah, um, blown yeah. deck. Blown ah. deck. <laughs> um, and uh, as he sort of clears the deck of the ship, um, he sort of loses control of his own body and so does physics seemingly um and he begins to sort of uh twist uh in into what is outer space for all intents and purposes um and so you see him try to uh as this is just his reaction to it i guess he tries to grab at the rest of his other ship as he semi passes by it and his hand sort of slips as he grabs for a railing that just isn't there. And he continues off into yes. uh, the ether uh, with nothing to stop his momentum. Um, and so that is the fate of the Null Captain. Um, it is, and is that your turn? Uh, that would be my turn, yes. Wonderfully done. 
Um, and Raphael, it is your turn. Well, I'm going to take advantage that it is my turn and let you know that this episode is currently over. Join us next time for the next episode. <laughs> In that case, uh, might be a good time to end because it is getting sure. very to love for me. No problem. So right. that'll be the final scene. Yep. You guys see the Knoll Captain, um, uh, you know, go off into the ether. Um, and, uh, and yeah, we'll see what happens on the next episode where Raphael is getting duped in the butt by, uh, whoa, oh my God. whoa, why do I got to get duped in the butt? <laughs> well, you were, I mean, it just, it just were, it's the reality of the situation. And will, will John know what the hell happens inside of the chamber? Will we we'll ever see Peter's character? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I really was hoping like he could get in on this, but that's fine. We're, we're moving along, I guess. Cool. Ah, yeah, that's exactly what happens. Poor old captain. Wah, wah. Wah. Alrighty, so uh, next Dad time we D and D, we'll 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 continue off with you're getting railroaded, which, yes. I mean, that just brings a whole new term of possibilities there. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> All right, so uh, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Uh, we're we're everywhere, literally on the internet. We have a Facebook, a YouTube, an Instagram. I'm sure there's a Snapchat there too. Um, what what other kind of social? It's a Twitter. There's a. I'm sure there's a hashtag somewhere of us. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for watching. That's that's a reach. Hey man, I got I got I got to whore myself out. He's also on you porn. That's right, and RedTube and Pornhub. <laughs> <laughs> and I will not be affected by net neutrality, so just make sure you get all of your fixing in. Soon you may be the only thing that people can watch. Exactly. You have to pay for that shit. <laughs> Alright, so uh, good night, guys. Yep. Okay. <laughs> good night. <laughs>